Hello, boys. This is Dr. Infinity. <coughs> Look alive, wage slaves! Presenting... And welcome to White Pill Media. This week, I'm presenting a new series on the channel. Very exciting. I'm calling it Welcome to the Troth. You know, this is going to be something when I review books. I think more specifically indie books, but it just could be any type of books. I'm going to try to paired up so that I'm doing like two or three at a time rather than just one because I just don't want to spam the channel with, you know, let's be realistic, unpopular book reviews. I thought about coming up with like a more inclusive name, like a more like welcoming name. You know, we're talking about indie books and indie authors. They need a little encouragement and help. But I thought, fuck that. And we're calling it Welcome to the Troth. You know, I, I like it. I think it's a really good name. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to probably try to work on the thumbnail a little bit. You know, I was trying to get the text to say, welcome to the troth, but like in the American flag colors. So like every letter would be red, white, and blue. Couldn't figure that out. But uh, imagine it, you know, imagine, you know, all the words in red, white, and blue. Looks pretty good, huh? Anyways, I meant to have a movie movie review for you guys this weekend. I saw two different movies that I thought I'd get a review out of. You know, I was hoping if not one, then the other or both. But I checked out Day of the Jackal, the original book. Or sorry, the original movie. Strongly did not like it. And I just watched Fitz Corraldo today. And I thought some of it was like interesting and all right. But ultimately not really worth a review. I'm going to talk about... That stuff at the end of the video about those movies a little more specifically, I they're not really worth doing a whole nother video for me. And some reviews I'm hoping to have out this week. You can see by the thumbnail, one, I'm pretty smart because I can just swap out whatever book I'm whatever books I'm reviewing for an episode of Welcome to the Troth, you know, and then boom, the rest of the thumbnail's just done. That's pretty clever, huh? Right? So this week I am doing Two books, two book reviews. We have Five to Four by James Craig. And this is just a kind of sci-fi, I don't know if I would say thriller, but like mystery thing. It's like pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to talk about that second, you know. And then we have Swords and Maidens, which is a more standard just sword and sorcery, fantasy, anthology. There are 11 stories in this. And I'm making this review because I recommend both of these. I'm going to have some spoilers for these works. The 5 to 4, I think that's available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. I got it off Barnes & Noble. It was 10 bucks. I would read more by this author. I enjoyed it. So I just want to start the review by saying that. In Swords and Maidens, I got this off Amazon for $14. It has 11 stories, and I would read more. If it's another like volume of Swords and Maidens, or if it's just something by... There were a few authors that I got introduced to that I liked, and I would, like, check out more of their works. So, that's it. There's going to be some spoilers. I'm going to, you know, briefly summarize some of it, you know, but there will be some spoilers. So, we're going to do this review, and you can come along with me, or I can drag you kicking and screaming. Doesn't matter. That hog's a monster. Get out of there. I can't go, big boy. First up, we're going to do the anthology Swords and Maidens. And I heard about these guys on Twitter, you know, just some people that I follow. And then, like, you know, they link Swords and Maidens and they're like, okay, I'll check it out. Uh, these guys seem to be typically, like, older authors, it seems like. And they seem just kind of like boomer con conservatives, like, I guess, like uh, Christian nationalists or maybe just Christians kind of conservatives. Whatever, like, they seem like good people. Uh, you know, they're like... On our side, I guess. You know, they're, they're fine. They're fine people. I don't see why you guys hate us Judeo-Christians so much. But something I wanted to start with, I, I think there's uh, this really common, like, saying on kind of the anti-woke or anti-SJW, whatever you want to call it, that side of the field, where they want to consume media or have media that doesn't have politics in it. We don't want politics in our media. And I think that's very wrong. I think we do want politics in our media and we want good politics in our media. We want our politics, you know, just like good 
people doing good things, you know, strong family values, etc. I think we really do want politics in this anthology definitely has these politics, these uh, older values and maybe older is not the right word, but uh, values which mainstream publications and like Hollywood and et cetera are brushing aside, if that makes sense, that are undervalued in our current society. I like the anthology uh, and I'm just going to go through and I'm going to talk about the stories I like, you know, and then I'll touch on a few of the stories I didn't really care for, but overall I recommend it. Uh, the first story is, it's decent. It's Wings of Ether. Uh, I wouldn't really call it memorable, but I can understand why you're running with this story first, you know, to lead off your anthology because like, hey, these are our values. You know, we have uh, everyone's just really like strong and good. It's not really subversive and broken because if you just subvert, 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 you're left with nothing at the end of the day. Uh, that's why I really hate the Witcher books. I think they're god awful. And the first law trilogy as well. I just dog shit, just dog shit, subversive crap. And it really doesn't work. The next story, the second story, was similar to the first where it's four, but it didn't like make an impression on me, if that makes sense. You know, it's not like bad, but it didn't leave me with like any strong feelings. So maybe that's not good. Winged Horse. This was really cool, man. Like I'm going to, uh, yeah. So I'll summarize this really quick. But Winged Horse, basically, we have like wizards that are battling on shards of like uh, basically like some crystal ball got smashed like a long fucking time ago and they're fight and these wizards are like duking it out with their armies on shards and if they kill other wizards then they collect more glass shards and if they gather enough of them they're going to be able to like build a planet because right now they're just like they have little areas they can fight on you know because uh, those are the shards i'm doing a terrible job of explaining it but it, it's fucking sweet it's really sweet. You know, there's like a lot of history and all this shit going on. And you're like, this is fucking awesome. I would love to read more of this world as like a serial. Like if there was a volume two of this anthology and like, hey, now we're on this new shard and we're fighting, you know, Wizard X, you know, or whatever. And then, yeah, you know, hey, we defeated him. And now we've, you know, expanded our territory and our army, you know, something like that. I think that would be sweet. Uh, I could also see this like as a novel or a series or something like that. A few little problems. Well, I think this is like a really cool story. It's a little too like jam packed. There's like too much going on. There's a lot of history that we're being filled in on. A lot of like uh, just time wise, like we can jump to the future and like past and like how are all these like shards connected and all that. We also have a new wizard recruit. And we have villains, and then we have, like, the interpersonal relationships between, like, our main wizard and, like, other wizards and all that. And it's just, like, it's a lot. And that's why I think maybe more it's, like, a serial or a novel. This could do better. It'd have a little more room to breathe. However, it was still, like, fucking cool. And I would definitely read more about it, for sure. Three Swords. Three Swords, that was uh, just pretty solid. Just uh, pretty solid stuff. I would say it's... In the same vein, it's like the first two stories of the anthology, but it has more meat than both of those. So I like it. I think it's solid. Uh, next up is like my favorite. <laughs> uh, it's called Harem Fantasy in Another World. It's really up there. I think this is probably my favorite. Uh, the ending fucking got me. The ending really fucking got me, and I don't really want to spoil it, but it's kind of like a, an isekai thing. I probably mispronounced that, but, uh, you know, it's a little twisted, you know, it's a little twisted and turned on its head. And if you do check out the anthology, if you are interested, let me know if you do and what you think about this story, because I don't want to give it away, but holy shit, that fucking got me. Then we have Azrael, which is uh, written by the editor of the anthology N.R. Lapointe. This was like, all right, there's like some cool monsters and stuff going on. Uh, I would say that some of the monsters are named the Silent Ones, and then we also have a monster in the story called the Nameless One. And I don't know if that was just kind of a naming convention for the world where like a lot of the monsters are named like something one or not, but if that's not like a convention, then I would say maybe change up the names a little bit, you know, maybe make them a little more distinct, but overall, like, I, I like it. Uh, the next few are, like, also, like, pretty decent as well. There's, like, The Gift, which is kind of like a World War II fantasy thing, 
Crazy Like an Elf, which is like not a Tolkien parody, but a homage to Tolkien a little bit, you know, and it's kind of funny. Supercomputers of Raw, and I don't want to like just bash and beat down on stories I don't really care for. I don't think that's like great to do, but I'm not going to like sugarcoat it and say that I enjoyed something when I didn't enjoy something. All right. So Supercomputers of Raw, I felt that there was way too much world building kind of just uh, put in there. And I didn't really care about our character or what was really happening. I would say I liked this story the least just because I, I feel like, yeah, for a short story, if it's like too much world, you know, because you have a limited amount of pages and there's too much world trying to be fit in here, you know, and ultimately, you're just kind of like drowning in keywords. At least that's how I felt. Viva la Patriarchy. Interesting title. Uh, I thought that was pretty decent. Then the last one, Judgment Son. This was another one I didn't really like where I guess I didn't really have a great sense of character. And with a limited amount of pages, I'm like, why do I care? You know, uh, sort of how I felt there. Overall, like, I really like it. You know, for 11 stories, I ended up liking the majority of them. And a few of them, I'm like, wow, I would definitely read more by these people. I would say probably my top guys are the Harem Fantasy one, the Winged Horse one. Uh, Three Swords is pretty solid. I'd probably read more by that guy. Also, Azrael, I'd probably read more by that guy. You know, those are kind of like let's say my big four, you know, and it's just like, I like anthologies because I get introduced to authors I didn't know existed and I can follow them, you know, and read stuff outside of the anthology they've done or whatever, you know, so I like it. I think this anthology, like, it's cool, you know, uh, I think this is the way we're creating our own media that has our values and, you know, we're making our own culture and it might be slow and it might take some time, but it's really important and it needs to be done and it needs to happen rather than just some people. I'm not like attacking anyone specifically, but like just some people where it's just like a uh, bitch and bitch and bitch about blah, blah, blah has gone woke, blah, blah, blah has gone whatever the fuck. And like I used to consume that type of content all the fucking time, but it's just boring and it's annoying and it has zero value or effect on like Disney or any of these companies, right? It has 0.0 effect on any of that shit. Uh, the only thing we can really do is like make our own stuff. So while I didn't like love everything in the anthology, it's still good enough for me to check out again because it's going in the right direction, right? That'll wrap it up for Swords and Maidens. Uh, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth checking out. If you do check it out, let me know about Harem Fantasy. If Yeah, let me know about that and how you felt at the end of it. How did you feel? Let's talk about it. Our next book, Five to Four by James Crack. Cool little book. It was a very quick read for me. It was, I think I want to say like 180 pages. No, 170, even better, even better. But yeah, it was a really fast read. You know, I'll say that I, I like locked room stuff, like that kind of mystery, like sci-fi fantasy stuff where we have a locked room and like kind of, these people aren't really strangers to each other. They are in some ways, you know, because like while you work with these people, you're not like intimately familiar with them, right? So Ryan wakes up with a few other people in his office. You know, we have Chuck, we have Ed, his boss, Lucy, who's like a secretary kind of person, and Michaela, uh, a woman that he knew in high school. And they're kind of figuring each other out and more about each other. And like there's some other stuff going on I'll get into in a second. But I like this kind of wake up in a room with a bunch of strangers, what the fuck's going on type of story. It reminded me a bit of Zero Escape 999. It's a visual novel. I think it's decent, I'm, you know, but I played it a few years ago and my taste might have changed, so maybe I don't like it as much anymore. I thought that was pretty decent if you kind of like visual novels like that, where it's you're kind of figuring out a mystery as you go. Yeah, and sometimes Steam has a sale where it's like the first game and the second game bundled together for like, 10 bucks or something like something ridiculous where it's like really good value. So maybe be on the lookout for that. In five to four, we have a brief introduction where we just set up a few of our characters, you know, just duh, 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 the dreary of office life. And then our main character, Ryan passes out and he wakes up 
and things are very wrong in his office and it's five minutes to four and the clocks aren't and time is not moving so it's a really cool like intro it's a really cool hook you know i want to say i really like this cover art you know it's just like it's pretty simple and like i don't know if i would say like minimalist you know i'm probably using that word wrong but i really like all the doors and like the little figures i think it's cool and yeah, it does a good job. And so basically, they're just like, hey, what the fuck's going on? What are we doing here? They're missing their ID badges. Ryan's like gathering everyone that's still in the building. And then they also start running into three like magical girls. Uh, kind of there's Bella, Tanya, and Morgan. So these three magical or so one of the magical girls tells him you need an ID badge to escape. And then, you know, just use the ID badge and get the fuck out. So like, okay, so on the look for an ID badge. And then there's this like weird monster thing running around called Builder. So far, I'm like enjoying it a lot. You know, there's just, uh, there's like a, we have this element of danger. You know, we've seen one dead body from that fat guy, Sean. So like, it's a really great like intro and like hook into the story. I was like really into it at the start. When they get back to their boss, Ed, Ed has caved in the head of a perfect clone of him you know so now we have these clones running around and all this shit so it's just adding another like mystery another layer to the world and it's like okay this is cool clones have been introduced so they don't know if they're talking to someone is this a real one or is, is it a copy right so now there's this doubt and now they're kind of turning on each other so all good stuff going on i will say though uh the whole like mystery of the clones like i feel like there's already a lot going on with people that are so mostly strangers to each other being sent into a very big locked room, but it is still like essentially a place they cannot escape from exactly without sort of harming each other. One question I kind of had by the end was, are the clones necessary for this story? Are the clones interesting enough on their own where... You know, they add an element of doubt for our characters. They add uh, some conflict because they're keeping the key cards away from them, you know, but it just seems like, are they like necessary or good for the story? You know what I mean? I don't know. Like, I feel like there's enough story going on with people like strangers being forced into a, you know, really big locked room together and they kind of have to work together to escape. You know, maybe you need something else for like, why can't they all just like leave right away? You know, I know you need something there, but I don't know if the clones necessarily fit or if they're like the correct, I guess, tool or method to keep the, I guess, players or people like stuck in there. Uh, they add something to it, you know, but I don't know. It's just something I was like questioning. It's like, could you do it another way without them? Also, I feel like with Michaela, who was like his high school sweetheart, who he asked out, she said no, and they both kind of have this regret that they've had for years, um, but it didn't feel that strong. Like, I didn't feel like that was strong enough of a uh, emotional, like, hook or tie between these two characters and, like, something that... And I just wasn't really sure if that was, like, powerful enough for something that they would both, like, still, like, have really present, uh, like, on their minds. You know what I mean? I wasn't sure about that. I wasn't sure about that exactly. If there couldn't be something that's a little stronger, a little, it doesn't have to be like a, something horrible that's tying them together, but like stronger love, you know? Because it just feels like, hey, I kind of crushed on this girl in high school. She said no. And, you know, we didn't really talk about it. I understand like his dad died around that time too, you know? So it's like, it, it probably, probably did have like this, heavy impact on him yeah maybe it could have been conveyed a little more maybe if we had a little more setup time before we got into hey the office is all fucked up uh with like more into ryan's like headset still like i still i still think it's like pretty decent and then you know we get the reveal that this guy chuck is actually a villain and he's not who he says he is you know because earlier we saw sean's dead body and this kind of like i didn't fucking get it at first and i was like i don't really understand but basically, you're, like three years ago, this guy Chuck ended up in a, a similar game with Sean from The Office. And then he ended up taking Sean's ID card and escaping and leaving Sean to be fucking stuck in the world. And Sean is now Builder. 
So Chuck escaped, but now Chuck has been brought back into the world. And so Sean's dead body, I guess that was the clone, right? I'm, yeah, that has to be the clone because Chuck is his actual, what he looks like, who he actually is as a person. So I thought that was cool. I thought that was interesting. So I don't know. Maybe the clone stuff is like, okay. I don't know. Maybe it's just like, okay. But they also weren't like like antagonistic. You know what I mean? Like they were just like, they can't really escape because they don't have like bodies to escape into. Like a clone doesn't get given a body when they escape from the world. So it just feels like they're just kind of like running around and just being in the way. Yeah, just kind of like screwing people up. And I guess, I don't know, I think they represent like, uh, they're like regrets or whatever. But I feel like the regrets aren't necessarily like powerful enough. You know what I mean? I like the ending. I like that we have an explanation at the end. I like that, you know, I like Builder. Uh, I thought that was like pretty good where he's like, he's a weird monster. You know, it's like, okay, he was actually a person. And I'm like, okay, that was cool. Uh, I like that. You know, I don't know if you could do like a sequel for this book maybe not a sequel but something set in like a similar universe where it's like hey here are the three magical girls but we have a new cast of characters there's something else going on whatever the ending and all that uh, i do like that we have some explanation because we're like what the fuck's going on is it magic is it an alien e experiment you know uh but it's kind of like a sort of afterlife thing i'm glad that yeah i'm happy that there's some explanation and it's not just like ah whatever i don't fucking know uh, I'm happy with that. I'd read more by the author. You know, I would check out more of their works because it was enjoyable. It was a quick read. I think it was priced well. You know, I think 10 bucks is definitely fair for this. I will point out, I think I found like two small problems, two, two little problems. I'm on page 123 and Ryan goes, I pulled my phone out and tried to power it on. My swim earlier had bricked it though. Okay, stay with me. Page 129. <clears throat> After my unplanned nap in the bathroom, my phone was hanging on at 8%. I didn't dare to wake it up. How can you check your phone if it's bricked, Ryan? Hmm? I don't know. I think that's a mistake. You know, I think it's a mistake, a small mistake. However, okay, okay, okay. Then page 134, second mistake. He's talking, Ryan is talking with Bella, who he just clubbed in the head, and now she came back and she's a little older, which is uh, interesting, like little detail for the world that's interesting. But he and Bella are talking, and Ryan goes, so I was right. That was that was the fake Lucy. There had been one chance that all of us had. There had been the chance that all of us had fake bodies. Yes, yes, you can rest easy about that, even if Bella would love to twist your head on backwards just to watch you trip. I think she meant Tanya here, because Tanya's the mean one, and Bella wouldn't refer to herself as Bella in the conversation. It was going to be like an eight, but now it's a one because of those little mistakes, right? Yeah, I'm just kind of a sucker for locked strangers in a locked room kind of stories. I like it, you know, so it definitely scratched that itch for me. Oh, yeah, I really like the chapters just ticking down, you know, because every time someone escapes, you know, we go forward one minute in time. And I think that's very cool. Both of those are recommendations, you know, uh, I think they're cool. I think they're pretty cool. And yeah, I like that people are making stuff like that. Anyways, Day of the Jackal, super boring, like assassin movie, not cool, not good. I watched the original one, but whoever called it a fucking thriller, liar, fucking liar. And Fitz Carl, Fitz Car Olaldo, more by Werner Herzog, and they're in South America, and it's like on a river, you know, so it's similar to Aguirre, very similar to Aguirre. But it's just, there's some really great, like, cinematic shots. There's some really beautiful imagery. But in terms of, like, character and plot, there's really not much there for me to care about. Fortunately, I didn't have, like, a movie or TV show review for people. So I apologize for that. I'm going to try to have one coming up this week. However, videos I do have, uh, videos I do have planned are I'm going to do a review of Aegean. This is a sci-fi anthology. You know, they have five volumes out right now, and I plan on having all five read. And, you know, I'll have a review of that, like an overview of that, hopefully by next weekend. I want to do a review of League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I'm kind of, by Alan Moore, I'm kind of anticipating not liking it, but I'm just going to read it. You know, have some thoughts on it. We'll see how it goes. In terms of myself, I finished the first draft of my book. So, hooray. That was really fucking hard to do. 
but I'm going to be like editing that and kind of, uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I'm happy, but, uh, man, it was not easy. <laughs> really was not easy. Anyways, I just want to say thanks for watching and Dr. Infinity out.